Hi, this is Dr. Ram here. So I want to explain the asthma drugs and the mechanism of action in the simplest way I can. So in order to understand about the action of asthma drugs, I'm going to give you some histology basics. So for example, this is the bronchial wall and the layers here are mucosa, the submucosa, muscularis and the outer layer. And here I've drawn some columnar epithelial cells in submucosa glands here in a muscularis layer. So this is a cross section I've shown you. So here is epithelial cells, that is the columnar cells here. And then uh, I've drawn the muscularis layer. And in between you have a uh, lot of blood vessels like this. And these are all the mast cells I've shown. And also imagine some other inflammatory cells here. Okay, and now I want to teach you about some important receptors present here. These are all the autonomic receptors, M3 or beta 2. And uh, here in the blood vessels, here you see can see the alpha 1 or beta 2 here. And remember, these are the smooth muscles that helps in the bronchoconstriction. And also you have a blood, blood vessel from where the blood is supplied to all the cells of a bronchus. And in blood vessels, you have alpha 1 or beta 2. And in the bronchial smooth muscles, you have M3 or beta 2. And always remember this M3 is innervated by the nerves, which releases the acetylcholine. And this acetylcholine acts on M3. And what is the intracellular mechanism here? The M3 is going to increase the calcium inside the cells. And the beta 2 is going to increase the cyclic AMP inside the cells. And M3 resulting in bronchoconstriction and beta 2 result in bronchodilation. And what is this NF kappa B I've shown here? So this is the inflammatory mediator. I mean, this is a transcription factor that's helpful for production of this inflammatory mediators like leukotrins or prostaglandins or any other cytokines, etc. So I've shown you the leukotrin receptors here on which leukotrins acts on. This leukotrin is one of the important inflammatory mediator that results in bronchoconstriction. Now we get the overall idea, right? Now here I've shown you the mast cells upon which bound by this IgE and then when the allergens bind to it, this can be activated in the release of mast cell degranulation, for example, histamine. That is also are so many inflammatory mediators like leukotrienes or histamine that results in again bronchoconstriction and edema. Why the edema happens here? Because of the vasodilation here, the fluid can ooze out that can result in edema. So in the asthma patients, the bronchoconstriction or the edema, why? Because of the excess inflammation happening in the bronchus and this inflammation is, can be due to some allergy, for example, pollens or grains or any dust particles fine, you know, for which the patient is sensitive to. And here I've shown you H, like histamine. Histamine is one of the inflammatory mediator that is released from the mast cells. I know, get the overall idea, right? Now let's see the drugs. Beta 2 agonist. Beta 2 agonist. So you give a drug that is going to act on the beta-2 receptor. This is going to vasodilate, right? So vaso, I mean, sorry, bronchodilate, bronchodilate, right? And M3 antagonist. So M3 actually results in bronchoconstriction because of the calcium inside the cells. So M3 antagonist, so you're antagonizing this M3 receptors, for example, say any atropine type of drugs. And beta 2 agonist like albuterol or salmetrol. And these are tiotropium or ipratropium, and I mean the atropine like drugs. This is going to antagonize the M3 receptors. And all these, which I have shown in the violet, glucocorticoids, leukotin receptor antagonists, LPO inhibitors, or um, the drug that binds with IgE, or the drug that prevents mast cell degranulation, all these is going to decrease inflammation. And if inflammation is decreased, the bronchoconstriction 
constriction is prevented and also the edema is also prevented. Now the glucocorticoids is going to inhibit this transcription factor enough kappa B resulting in decreased inflammatory mediators. And leukotrain receptor antagonist is going to the drug that is going to bind with the receptors, leukotrain receptors. Uh, for example, drugs like Monte Luca, Zafir Luca, these are some examples that are uh, drugs that inhibit this leukotrain receptor. And also this is a lipoxygenase enzyme that helps in the production of leukotrains. And this enzyme can be inhibited by drugs like Xyluton. Drugs like Xyluton inhibits this lipoxygenase enzyme. This enzyme helps in the production of leukotrains. And uh, Comalizumab is a drug that binds with this IgE antibodies. I mean, the serum, this the omalizumab is going to bind with this IgE and uh, this helps in the prevention of mast cell degranulation, okay? Because IgE, if it's not bound with the mast cells, this mast cells cannot release the uh, inflammatory mediators. And mast cell degranulation here, is the drug called chromoline sodium. This chromoline sodium is going to uh, bind with the mast cells and helps uh, prevention of the mast cell degranulation of inflammatory mediators, chromoline sodium, fine. And the uh, glucocorticoids for the example drugs like uh, fluticasone or budesonide, fine. And uh, PD inhibitors, PD phosphodiesterase is an enzyme that is going to break down this cyclic AMP. So the cyclic AMP in the bronchial uh, smooth muscle cells helps in bronchodilation, right? So PD is the enzyme that is going to hydrolyze this cyclic AMP. If the PD enzyme is inhibited, the cyclic AMP increases inside the cell, resulting in bronchodilation. So PD inhibitors like theophylin or proflumilast. So these are some drugs for PD inhibitors. Okay, so these are some basic idea for you to study this asthma drugs. I hope this session helped you. So if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and you can follow all the other MedManus videos. Thank you, see you then.